live rise of the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear, dear. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I call this meeting of Independent School District 544 to order. Uh, clerk, will you establish a form for us, please? <coughs> Ms. Hermes? Present. Natalie Clinton? Yes. Dean Rigsaw? Here. Matt Lemke? Here. Lane Danielson? Here. Molly Cole? Absent. We do have a quorum. We need a, a motion to approve the agenda. <coughs> see. We have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> agenda passes. Uh, we have no acknowledgments today, so we're going to move right into reports. And we have Derek Abrams here to talk about our spring sports update. All right, uh, we have a sheet going around, and uh, on the top is a just a, a section of the spreadsheet I put together based on the information, the data, evaluations, whatever you want to say, that I collected uh, over the course of the spring sports. Uh, and I also got into a little bit about what I felt our strengths, at least related to the spring. This is going to be a lot, uh, <clears throat> a lot more informative when we have the fall, the winter in there, and then start building from year to year. It's going to be great, great to be able to do some comparisons and see where we're heading in the right direction and things like that. Uh, I was very pleased with it. Uh, it took two years to kind of develop and, and make sure the numbers were right. I wanted to be uh, fair in the evaluation and the <coughs> scoring and things like that. So uh, we did kind of a trial run with our spring coaches. Uh, they didn't exactly know everything that was going to be on it. I, I had shown it to them, but it wasn't that we had really fully uh, discussed it yet. So they're, they're, all of them were more than willing to, to go through that this spring. And, and these are some results. In the work session, after you have a chance to look at it, I can break it down a little bit more. Uh, we have a, just very quickly on the left, you see total number, 168 is our total number of students that participate in the spring sport, which is pretty close to what we've had in the past. Uh, one difference between this number and previous numbers is that it, I did not include any seventh or eighth graders. And the reason for that is when, when we're looking at our total number of kids, um, and what, what, what do our programs need? I wanted to look at 9 through 12. We're always going to have something to make there that come up, especially in some of our girls' sports. That's great. I have zero problem with that. Um, they add to it. It's just I want to see what are our numbers 9 through 12 because that's what we kind of base things on. Uh, the total participation number 68%. <coughs> what that means is that's 168 kids is 68% of the total number that our coaches felt was our ideal number of kids to have but it's kind of a pipe dream what for various reasons our size and things like that we may not reach that 100 percent ever which is okay can you explain that again how many 68 percent 68 percent of what i i asked every coach i said yeah. so exact how many kids not counting seventh eighth graders would you say is ideal for a, for a program to compete with the brainers the st cloud techs things like that yeah. uh what what should we have what what would you love to see someday and so the uh, number of participants, number not, of, not the quality, of not the quality, just the total just the number, of the number of kids to have. Okay. Now, you know, again, some of them it's a lot easier to do when you're a St. Cloud Tech or a brainer and you have, you know, thirteen hundred kids in your high school. Where we have six hundred, um, but that's where the other parts come in too. Where I talk about our retention rates. That's an important number to look at. Our multi-sport athletes, things like that. So I'll, I'll get more into that if you have questions and you want you want to look at that. I was very pleased with it, uh, both how it worked, and our numbers and, and the status of most of our uh, programs. Uh, just highlight some accomplishments from the spring. Uh, we had some state tournament appearance, appearances by individuals in boys track. Robert Sewell uh, finished ninth in double A and for the long jump. And in girls track, Sabrina Franning uh, finished ninth uh, in the 300 meter hurdles. Jane McKeever in the pole vault and Audrey Mudford in the high jump. One thing to note with track too is track is one of only three sports that we have, or there are four if you count boys and girls. Um, it, that track only has two classes still. 
and we're actually in the higher class. There are some that, like boys tennis, there's two classes, we're single A. Girls tennis, we're double A, for whatever, uh, because of the way the numbers shake down. But track, that means we're going against the, the biggest. So there's 16 teams in our section, we're going against Moorhead, Tech, Brainerd, uh, you know, again, those, those bigger schools up here, only the top two out of all those schools make it to state. And so that's pretty impressive, just getting this number down there. And then when you get down there, again, Robert's jumping against kids from Hopkins, Wyzetta, things like that. To finish ninth down there in the entire state is quite an accomplishment. Same with Sabrina. She actually qualified third um, after the prelims and then finished ninth the next day. Um, and Jane McKeever, both uh, Sabrina and Jane broke personal records or school records, which do down there in the pole vault and 300 meter hurdles. Uh, Nate Longton, Aaron Shelstead. Uh, both qualified for boys golf for the state tournament as well. Both our boy, I didn't put this on there, but both our boys and girls golf teams qualified for the section tournament. They have a subsection tournament, top four out of our section, again with about 12 schools, they jumped up and made it into the section. So that was good for both teams. Uh, CLC Players of the Week, Aaron <coughs> Shellstead in April on April 30th. On May 7th, Robert Sewell was named CLC Player of the Week for boys track. And on May 14th, Tori Ratz was named for girls softball as well as Audrey Mudford for girls track. So we did have some CLC players of the week as well. Uh, just a quick summary, and again, if you have questions on any of these, I'll stick around for the work session and you can ask more detailed questions. Uh, online registration system uh, was fantastic. It, uh, the, the only issues we ran into was probably user error and us trying to learn everything that is actually involved in there. There's several times that I thought to myself, I really wish it did this, and I call them up, and they're like, well, it actually does. You just have to click here, click here, click here, and it'll take care of that for you. Um, and, and the other part of it was just getting that coordinated with Synergy. You know, we put Synergy in last year, brand new, and this system, they have to talk to each other. So it took us a little while uh, before we got both systems going, and both companies could talk to each other to see how to best do it. But very pleased with that. Uh, Inside Out Coaching Initiative, which I've spent most of this year talking about. Very happy with year one implementation. Um, as much as I wanted to jump right in with both feet last uh, fall with the coaches, very glad. <clears throat> I took the recommendation and said, go slow. Um, the, the coaches have been wonderful. They've, they've, they've really embraced this. And uh, the big steps that we're gonna be looking in year two here is uh, their purpose statements, which we've been talking about all year, which they've always had to do for the state high school league. They have to put that in there. But this, what we've, we've done a refocus on, what, what really are you saying in your purpose <coughs> statement? And then beyond putting it in and forgetting about it, it's writing one, it's sharing it. I'm requiring them all to share it with their players, share it with their parents, share it with all stakeholders. Uh, their, their players should be able to tell you, this is what my coach's purpose is. And so they have to do that part of it and then live it. Um, making those tough decisions get a lot easier if you, if you base it on your purpose. Um, and second, implementing and intentionally teaching the character traits that each program has identified. The, the key word there is intentional. Um, since we've all been in activities way back in the, the day, we've always said, you know, sports builds character and, and, and everything like that or any activity that you do. But the thing is, you really have to intentionally teach it. And we're very good at saying that we're it's an educational process, it's, it's a big part of the school, kids are better off by being in activities. What we're trying to do here in Fergus is show it that to you and intentionally doing that every day. And uh, so we'll be implementing that as well as year two. And then, don't really want to think about it yet, but Fall Sports Roundup will be August 6th at six o'clock. And uh, we're getting some things ready for that to talk to the parents about. What I'm going to try this year is we're going to do one roundup in different years we've tried. First year, I know my first year we tried one in the winter too. It tied in with conferences. Uh, this year, the way I'm going to really promote it and push it starting in July is this is for all sports, all grades, 7 through 12, not just fall. You get the basic <coughs> information. And then I would like to, at all times during conferences, which is right before winter and right before spring, is I'll have a little... Um, I'm here for conferences, so we'll have a station set outside my office, which will be help for anybody that needs help registering for things or ask questions. So it'll be kind of an individual <coughs> roundup or whatever they need, but I'll be available to them at, at conference time for both um, to answer any other questions. 
Um, if you have any questions for me right now, like I said, I'll stick around if you have some other questions for the work session. But any questions right now? No. Thank you, Dan. Superintendent Ness. Yes, uh, a couple things. Uh, with the legislative session, uh, they did not pass the uh, the large omnibus bill where we had, I think it was $18 a pu pupil unit for school safety, but the bonding bill was signed. And in, in the bonding bill, there's $25 million. Uh, half of that has to be spent out state for school safety. Uh, so what we have is we, can, we thought oh, we can do one entry per building and my understanding, their focus is going to be secured entrances. Um, so our probably our number one right now would be Cleveland, and we'd also look at Heritage. So example, even though we're leasing Heritage, if we did receive a grant, that we could reduce the cost of our lease uh, there. Uh, we also have rec building. So uh, Mark has contacted Scott DeMarlaire about designing some projects that uh, <coughs> I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be a pretty simple form has to be in, and it has to be in by August 29th. If you're in by August 29th, you're deemed to be first. And it's first come, first serve. So everyone in the state's gonna be there on August 29th. If you don't, you don't get it. So it's a competitive <coughs> grant. Uh, literally, I think it's going to be a lottery. So they're just going to, they're gonna separate. Here's all the projects that are secured entrance projects. And okay, so now there's 50, 60 of them, and they just start drawing. Well, this one's, you could go up to 500,000. So as soon as they use up the 12.5 million, that's it. So uh, that's, that's what they have. So we'll see. It's only 25 goes. schools, if they all ask for 500,000. I don't think, like a project like ours for Cleveland, it probably is more in the $100,000 range. So I, I think just for Cleveland? Good. Just for Cleveland. 100,000 on an entrance. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when you do bullet resistance glass and the buzzers buzz-in system, mm -hmm. yeah, and I pro Adams and McKinley were probably more because they're larger. Yeah, right. it's Cleveland's a pretty small, small entrance, mm -hmm. so. Um, I was yeah. gonna ask, um, why don't we have buzz-ins on uh, at, Cle at the Kennedy? That's one of the projects. Oh, that's one of the projects. Yeah. So we'd be asking for hundred thousand for each. Well, we. This one, it'll probably be more. We'll, that's what Scott from our lair will do is we'll cost it out and you know, do some architectural work on it and then put it in. But we'll ask for a little bit more than, you know, because everything always runs. Because we haven't done McKinley and uh, Adams in what, four years now? Three, yeah, three, three years? Four. So the cost, I can only imagine, is, is risen from there. So, yeah. Uh, hires, uh, we have a few hires on our agenda today. Uh, we're, we'll, and we'll hear back from a kindergarten candidate for t uh, by tomorrow, uh, and I believe Mr. Maki said homework help and a .5 uh, FTE for elementary art, which does the fifth and sixth grade. Uh, those are the, the last two, and, and then I believe uh, they've interviewed about a dozen special ed paras, and they're offering it to six. So you'll you'll we'll keep hiring all summer. Uh, so I think we, we had some really good candidates. And then uh, school traffic, we, we had a meeting last week and um, the focus uh, really came about having a small roundabout at the uh, Randolph and Freiburg. That seemed to be the logical solution. Uh, they really do not want the warrants, uh, what they call the traffic warrants, the uh, heavy does not uh, allow for stop signs. Um, and then if you're looking at uh, stop lights, a small roundabout is not that much more in cost than putting in traffic lights. So, so we're there. We're looking, but the to compound the issue within a few weeks, we, they say, it's Freiburg is going from a county road to a city road. So, so right now we're dealing with the county and the city and us, and soon it'll be just the city. And then how do we get that onto the uh, the rules? They're, they're also looking at improving the, the uh, uh, Burlington Road over here, which uh, that's on deck for 2019. So, so some things, if, if we could, the best case scenario is, is plan the round, a small roundabout and, and make that happen at that intersection. <coughs> Install a turning lane into the Freiburg lot, so the, the, I call it the big step lot. That's probably people, that's the landmark, the big steps on and it's a student, it's a staff parking lot, but it's also middle school pickup drop off. So as you're entering, coming from the south, you, it will be a turning lane versus a parking lane. 
trying to get flow going better. Um, by the stoplights where we cross Freiburg, uh, put some stop bars. Stop bars are paint on the road, not not literally bars across the road. It's the it's the uh, so the cars know where to stop. Uh, looking at hiring a crossing guard when stu after school <coughs> when students are going from this building over to the rec building. So when you're crossing Randolph, it's very busy. I've had parents tell me that they actually come and pick up their child here and drive them to. Roosevelt because of its the heavy traffic it's uh, concerning um, in this parking lot right out here the bus parking lot we have some crosswalks uh, just make sure the buses are are uh, appropriate and then part of our uh, research over here we'll be looking at expanding the parking lot number five which is the Freiburg lot looking at uh, do we do a uh, better parking lot expanded across uh, by the playground all the way over to the to the uh, to the new green shed uh, driveway so the new shed driveway so there's some things that we'll be looking at uh, so it's not it's not one big splash there's not one big solution here but we'll we'll do a lot of education uh, handouts at open house and, and the main one flat out is wait until 3:30 to pick up your child uh, well, no, the main one is let the buses do their job uh, and have them deliver your child home. So less traffic around our building <coughs> would be good. Uh, if not, let your, uh, come at 3.30, the buses are leaving. You can park right there. So we just have to recommend some different uh, traffic. How did the trial run at the end of school go with the buses not going down? Yes, uh, we, we plan on continuing. To, I haven't talked with Mike Clark extensively on it, but uh, anything we can do to stop left-hand turns from off of Randolph onto Freiburg right. will be will help. So that we'll plan to continue. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, go ahead. The uh, just go back on the the funding for the uh, for safety and wise that would be available in 2019. Those funds It'll be available. Right away. They, they will let us know by the September. The project won't happen until 19, 19. But we'll know if we've got funding for it by the end of uh, September. Where's the funding coming from? State. 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 The bond bill. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we'll, uh, August 29th is the date. I think September 30th is they'll notify districts who, who got funded and who didn't, and then we can plan and it'll be a, a spring. It'll, it'll be a summer project next sure. summer. Yep. Okay. Any other questions for Superintendent Ness? Okay, moving on to our general consent items. We need to approve the minutes from the June 11th, 2018 <coughs> school board meeting. Uh, personnel, Superintendent Ness. Yes, we've hired uh, Sally Kerbot is the elementary teacher. She'll be at uh, third grade, and uh, Nathan Pillsbury at third grade also. Um, it's interesting that uh, Kim Kamarowski, there's eight kindergarten, uh, eight third grade teachers now, so they sort of have two teams. And Kim Kamrowski will be mentoring three new people in third grade. So all of a sudden, third grade is a real uh, <coughs> heavy, heavy one. And then Emily Haber, elementary teacher, grade five. And then we have two agreements that uh, fall within the parameters, payroll manager and director of community education. So recommend approval of those items. Do we have a uh, motion to approve the general consent items? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Natalie. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? General consent items passed. Uh, moving on to old business, we have the financial budget for FY19. Um, do we have a motion to approve the uh, financial budget? So moved. Do we have a second? A second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, just to let you know that my this budget will last all the way down to agenda item number four, in which case you will add <laughs> the staff. So, so that's good. It's not uncommon for my budget to get blown up at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> but we do need one. It's so. a good budget. <laughs> yes. We expect that. Mm. <laughs> uh, any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the financial budget for FY19 say aye. Aye. Um, aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, moving on to new business, we have the 2018-2019 facility lease between Fergus Falls Area Family YMCA and ISD 544. Mark, do you want to speak on this before we? Yeah, this is just a, an annual lease that we have that's it's, uh, funded through our levy uh, lease levy. 
Uh, it is an adjustment uh, from 16,000 to 16,5, so a $500 increase. Uh, that was a larger increase than normal for the last couple of years, simply because we went many, many years at 0%. <coughs> and, uh, so we're just trying to get it up to where it should be. Um, after this lease, uh, then we'll, we have come to an agreement that we'll just go up by whatever inflation is. Whatever that may be, we'll have to figure that out. What are we leasing from them? We, we lease gym space from them uh, to run a shared time uh, physical education program where we hire the teacher and then uh, we teach um, morning, sun. morning sun kids. Oh, okay. And those kids are considered ours for funding. Purposes I was going to say, why are we paying for it if it's morning sun? Yeah. But the shared time program is a state aid kind of thing. Okay. And so we do also have kids that come over here from the parochial schools to have orchestra or band or whatever. And same kind of thing. When they're in our building being taught by, excuse me, not our building, but taught by our teachers, mm -hmm. then they're considered our, our students. Do we have a motion? to approve uh, the uh, lease between us and the YMCA. So moved. Let's see, do we have a second? I'll second. Allie. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Invitation for quotes for milk and related products. <coughs> Mr. Tuck, this is an annual. It's another annual quote that we get for milk for the, for the food program. So do we have a uh, motion to approve? I'm not going to do what Melanie does or Miss Melanie for that one. So moved. <laughs> do we have a second? Second. Steve? <laughs> Any discussions? Got that. Sorry. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Get there faster, Steve. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Motion is approved. Item number three we have the 2018 2019 Fergus Falls Public Schools meal prices. Um, Elementary lunch, we went from K to, through fifth grade is two dollars and forty-five cents. We're um, and then secondary lunch is six through twelve is two dollars and sixty cents. And I'll have Mark speak on this before we. Okay. Yes, if you remember right, uh, the federal government had required that we increase to two dollars and seventy-eight cents over a period of time. Uh, this continues that trend by going to ten cents uh, <coughs> up on the lunch prices. Uh, the intent here is to try to expand food offerings and make them more healthy and so forth. So that's what I'm recommending. Mark, just curious, do you know how these prices compare to other schools around the same area? Uh, we're right in there with them. In some okay. cases, a little low. Okay. But not, you know, like a nickel or something like that. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the uh, increase in meals? So moved. Do I have a second? I'll okay. uh, Discussion? Um, just a question. So by increasing the prices, we were, or maybe this is a work session, we were talking about hiring possibly a, somebody who's a little bit more versed in nutrition. Is that where the money's probably going to go? Is that? Yeah, that. And then of course, <coughs> once you hire that person, they're going to make recommendations on on uh, food offerings, so you have to have some money set aside for something that's a little higher price. Okay. Right, so we will be needing to hire a food service director to replace Becky Shear, but we're also right. looking at uh, the service co-op has a registered dietitian and buying additional days, uh, buying days, we don't even have any days right now, but buying days that will help that person. Like I say, are we doing more fresh fruits and vegetables? Are we doing different type of things? So so there'll be increased costs for staffing <coughs> this next year. I just didn't want it public to think we're just increasing when we don't really we weren't losing money on no. the program it's just well it's like anything else <coughs> like some food prices go up every year too so mm -hmm. sure yep. any other discussion okay all those in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. opposed motion passes moving on to item number four we have an additional one FTE kindergarten position for the 2018-2019 school year this is based on increasing enrollment numbers in kindergarten. So do we have a motion to approve this position? What is the enrollment at this point? 200 right now. And then over the summer, uh, the, the last five to six years, uh, Mr. Colbeck keeps it really close data. 
we're probably getting anywhere from 15 to 25 more students uh, coming in by, by the uh, start of the school year. That's, uh, there's quite a few that just register late. So, so the idea would be, we'll probably be in the 220 range, which would have uh, 10 sections would be 22 students per class. Right. So bring uh, one additional means we're going to have 10 sections. Though. Correct. We're at nine sections right now. Yep. And uh, this would be a 10th section. So moved. So moved. Blaine? Do I have a second? Second. <coughs> Any further discussion? Interesting that we're hitting 10 because that's the max we were before we started making all these cuts. So now that we're hitting 10 and that goes through. And those were half day sections, right? They were Back in those kinder, days, yes, yeah, when we had more space, day. but yeah. I'm just looking at it at first grade, second grade, third grade, if it continues that trend, mm -hmm. our yeah. buildings are going to get full. Mm -hmm. So 10 years ago, we were at six sections. And we, we were down that low, mm -hmm. six, five and six. You know? Which is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> so all those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> okay, motion passes. <laughs> Item number five, we have an updated lead in the water, paint and soil written plan for Fergus Falls Public Schools. And Super Test, do you? Yes, it's a this? kind of a boilerplate uh, plan, but uh, the uh, state legislature uh, changed a little bit. We have done our uh, lead paint testing recently, and all of our elementary buildings passed uh, with flying colors, but now they've adjusted things, so this will, will start in July 1. We'll have a new round of uh, testing for lead in all of our buildings as well. So, but, but right now we're uh, we are in compliance and we're we're looking good as far as uh, the uh, very limited uh, amount of lead in the water, very minuscule. So, but this plan will be an update for future. I, I don't anticipate it change it again. So this will be the one we'll be living with from now on. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the uh, written plan? A move. Do we have a second? A second. I'll get to see this one. <coughs> uh, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. <coughs> that concludes our regular school board meeting. <coughs> our next regular school board meeting will be Monday, July 16th um, at 7 15 a.m. right here at the uh, other community room at Kennedy Secondary School. Following this meeting, we will go into a work session to talk again more about activities, um, negotiations, the July 16th uh, school board retreat agenda, uh, heritage lease, traffic study, and staffing. So we have a full work session today. So with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? A move. Steve, do we have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? We are. <coughs>